The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. And today, our speaker today, we're very proud to have Dr. Surgeon, the Medical Director of the Heart Centre of Bangkok Patia Hospital. Today we'll be speaking about arterial health, especially on the dangers of abdominal aortic aneurysm. He is presently a member of the Heart Association of Thailand, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons of Thailand, the Royal College of Surgeon of Thailand, and the Society of Organ Transplant of Thailand. So, please welcome Dr. Surgeon, and uh, we'll be waiting for his presentation on aortic aneurysm. Dr. Surgeon. It's my pleasure to be here at the Patia City Expert Club with this lovely morning. Uh, what I'm going to talk today is uh, some disease that uh, I, I, I would say is terrible when it happens to you. Okay. So everybody should be aware that something can happen when you're getting old, when you have uh, risk factors like smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes. This thing can happen without any warning and all of a sudden you may die. Uh, if you come to the hospital in time, we may save you or we may not save you. But this is happened and that we have this kind of such surgery or even if this is surgery, maybe uh, about 10 cases a year in this hospital. Right? So this is called the abdominal aortic aneurysm, which is the aorta, which is the, the big artery that came off from the heart and go down to the abdomen and divide it into two branches to both legs, right? So this is how the aorta looks like. It's a big organ. The average diameter is about 2 to 2.5 uh, centimeters in diameter. When it gets in trouble, which can get in trouble, uh, any part of the organ, like a, from the top, I and mean, we call the ascending aorta, uh, descending aorta, and when it reaches the abdomen, we call abdominal aorta. So, from now, I will call this, and this is triple A, or abdominal aortic aneurysm. Okay. So, what cause of the triple A is mostly like from high blood pressure, smoking, and degeneration from when you get old. Most of the patient is asymptomatic, that means you don't have any sign, you have any, don't have any warning, no pain, nothing. And it slowly dilated, slowly increased in diameter. Some people, when it get in trouble, like uh, when, when the aneurysm, uh, daily to certain size, you may cause pain. Maybe abdominal pain on the front, back pain, or the front pain on the side, like a, at the kidney position, or even sometimes we have a small, we call trouble embolism, that means the aneurysm itself produce multiple small clots, and then go downstream to your legs, maybe to, uh, until maybe down the way, all the way to your toes, okay. When the aneurysm causes trouble, it may produce symptom, symptoms. And this symptom is a very fast warning sign that it may cause rupture or burst, okay. When this happens, it has a really high mortality rate, even if you are in the hospital, okay. So where is the reason you have many, many types? But the most common one that we found very often is this type of what we call triple A. We don't call triple A here. Triple, this is, a, we call thoracic aneurysm, but triple A means something below the 
uh, in, inside the abdomen or below, below the diaphragm that divided uh, the, the chest and the abdominal cavities. So today I will uh, concentrate on this triple A, which is uh, very dangerous and also very common in among our population, especially uh, people like uh, you from, from the western part. It's very common. Okay. There are multiple types of the AAA, which I will not go into details. This is, this is uh, for, for us surgeons who will uh, plan how to do the surgery. But the most common type is, is this one, we call infrarenal. Uh, the way we classification of this type, we classify by the location of the rhythm compared to the location of the because renal means kidney, renal artery. So this is the renal artery, and we classify as supra or above, infra or, or below, or sometimes we call jasta. Jasta means around. Sometimes it's, it's cross, uh, going a little bit, slightly a little bit above the renal artery. We call jasta. Okay. So this is the. Uh, the picture of the normal angiogram, the, the aorta is the abdomen. Uh, the size is about 2 or 2.5 centimeters maximum. When it reaches something like this, when, when the wall is getting weak under the pressure, it can get bigger. It's called dilatation or the aneurysm. Okay. Uh, the way of dilatation, there are two types. Uh, the first one is called fusiform. Fusiform means it's, it's a, a circumferential dilatation. And the, the next thing is secular. Secular is like a sac. So it's, it's not circumferential. It's maybe protrude on one side or, uh, or something like a sac. Which is, uh, the secular is, which is more dangerous because the thinning of the wall is, is uh, not circumferential. So is have a high instead of getting improper or rupture in the secular type. And the, the fusiform one is, is more common and it's also easier to repair compared to the secular type one. Risk factor, uh, a lot of risk factor, and this, this is also risk factor same as the cardiovascular disease, heart disease, heart attack. The same, they are in the same family of the risk factor. Uh, unfortunately, male gender is the risk factor. When you are male, you're getting old, you, you have a chance of uh, getting disease, uh, triple A or even uh, heart disease, coronary heart disease. You have blockage in your heart artery. Uh, aging, <coughs> okay. Caucasian, atherosclerosis is also a uh, risk factor from uh, you have high diabetes, you have high blood pressure, or from your family, you can have atherosclerosis. That means is is you have atheros mean atherosclerosis mean mean heart or, or calcium. Or sometimes we have a strong family history of triple A, which can pass to you. Uh, sometimes you have uh, peripheral artery and reserve like a below. Below the delta, you have the iliac artery, femoral artery. Sometimes it happens to, to that part. Okay. Some of the genetic disorder, like a Marfan syndrome, like people who are very tall, uh, they have like Marfan syndrome or other uh, family history disease, uh, history of ethic dissection. This is an identity disease, also caused by really high blood pressure. And the wall of the delta got torn and it got, got not aneurysm, it just split into uh, two, two part or two lumen. Okay, or you have history of some surgery before. The risk of the rupture increase when you have a large aneurysm, this is like a, a normal physic. When you have a, a bigger, the bigger is more dangerous because when, when, when you, your aneurysm is getting bigger, that means the wall is getting thinner. And the boy getting thinner, the chance of rupture is more. Smoking. Smoking uh, also may uh, introduce uh, 
atherosclerosis, and also when, when the wall is, I would call less compliant, stiff. When when the wall getting stiffer, it cannot tolerate the expansion, so it get get ruptured only easier. Blood pressure is is just straightforward. When you have high, high, the higher you have the pressure, the higher chance of you getting ruptured. Okay. Uh, Sometimes when we detect this aneurysm early and it's not, not have the indication to have surgery, so we may need to follow up every six months, every year. And if we found that the aneurysm is expanding, for example, like a, a more than 0.5 center per year, then we can have a higher chance of getting rupture. Sometimes it's not reached the, the golden number, which is 5.5 centimeters. But you have a really fast rate of expansion. We may consider you for a surgery before it reaches five by five or before it cause causing rupture. Uh, as I say, male is more 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 risk of of uh, But if you are female and you have this disease, you die more, but of a higher risk. And, and mostly of the female. The reason behind it is because uh, most of the female, when you get this disease, they are maybe average 10 years older than male when, when it happens. So the, the mortality rate for surgery for the female is higher. And most common uh, symptom is pain. All right? Pain, there are many pains in the abdomen. I, I would like to say, if you have pain from the aneurysm, the pain will be very characteristic. It's called uh, sharp shooting, continuous pain. Sometimes pain like a stab. Someone somebody stab your stab your your abdomen through the back. It's pain like a very couldn't help you like feel like dying with, with the pain. It's not like a stomach pain, which is come coming on and off. This pain is like continuous sharp shooting pain. And sometimes you may have a lot of sweating. If this is a bad sign, if you have this sign, don't touch it. Just come to the hospital. Okay? We will fix you. Okay. Uh, like I said, mostly uh, asymptomatic. You don't have any disease. You don't have any symptoms. You don't have pain. You feel happy. You feel okay. But you have this pattern. When symptoms ha happen, pain, and like I said, is a very characteristic pain. Okay, it's not like uh, stomach pain, not, not like back pain, not like uh, pain from the spine, no. It's, it's really characteristic. And this, this pain can go anywhere. Depends on the location, as I said, the elder is from the, from the cyst to, to the, the legs. So the pain can be up here, can be here, can be here. Or even in your in your previous area, you can have the pain. So, but the characteristic is always the same, no matter where is the location of the aneurysm. Uh, while we, we can find, or we can we can do some screening, and we can find accidental finding from your routine checkup, which today we offer a, a free abdominal ultrasound test. For, for a high risk patient. Screening in the high risk patient is, is one of our goals that we, we want to detect the, 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 the hidden disease. All right? some, some people, if you are skinny, you may have, we call pulsate high abdominal mass. If you are, have a big uh, tummy, or we call poop weight, you, it's very difficult for, for, for us to have that physical examination and feel the positive thing. And if you are small, skinny, we may we may find. Okay. Uh, is finding from sorry. Uh, from the routine examination, uh, we may able to find. And sometimes it's associated with other disease like uh, I saw many people who came to see me because of the leg pain. When you walk, 
for 50 meters, 100 meters, and then you need to stop because of the pain. You have cramp in your leg, which is we call claudication. Claudication is a condition that when, when your leg muscle uh, need more energy, and you have blockage in your artery to your legs, and cause uh, inadequate oxygen to your leg muscle and cause cramping. That's we call claudication. This may associate with AAA. Uh, for who have symptomatic, like I said, pain, okay, uh, and it's located okay anyway, but it's very characteristic pain. However, uh, abdominal pain is very really not specific. You may pain from dog stone, you may pain from uh, kidney stone, or stomach, whatever, but uh, anyway, if you cause ab abnormal pain, you need to see doctors, and doctor will can do, do some tests and can tell you what is the pain caused for, and this one of the killing cause. Okay. And limb ischemia. Uh, like I said, uh, it associated with uh, chronic patient peripheral artery disease that have broken new artery, and also sometimes when the aneurysm getting bigger, you have you call thrombus or clot inside show the picture. Those thrombus can come out or, or call emboli uh, from the enzyme and go distally to, to your legs or to your toes. Rupture, uh, this is, <clears throat> I don't want to see this, but I see this all the time. When, when people came in pain and shock, uh, that means the, the wall is could not, the wall of the aorta is could not hold the the blood anymore, so it will cause cause leaking of the blood. And we mentioned this is a mainstream of blood. The blood passes about five meters per minute to these channels, and you got a hole, you may die in ten minutes. Okay, depends on the size of the rupture. Sometimes, if you are lucky, the rupture is on. That you're on the back side of, of, of the body, you have some, some organ to protect and, and conceal the bleeding. But if the rupture in the front is a free, free bleeding and you die, you may not reach the hospital. Okay. Uh, we call classic triad. The, the, the side, side of the rupture is classic triad. It's like this. This is the rupture, like a, this is normal when you get rupture. It can breathe in anywhere in the abdomen. Uh, sometimes we, we have uh, some time to fix you. The classic kind of this severe pain, severe acute pain, like I said, it's chopping, intolerable pain. You have a positive time which may or may not fine, and you have shock or hypotension. Uh, this means on the size of the system, like I said, if it reach the number is about 5.5 cm, the chance is about 15% per year. If you are less than 4 cm, the chance is zero. And if you are more than 8 cm, the chance is 50%. Most of the rupture, uh, AAA, what it, that I saw <coughs> nearly reached 10, 10 cm undetected. All right. Uh, when you have no, don't have any routine uh, physical examination every year. It may reach 10, 10 centimeters in two, two, three years. But if you have an annual checkup, we may detect something between this. Okay, we're not reaching this, this uh, number anymore. Okay. Limb ischemia also arises from, from thrombus. Uh, and the drug is all, all the some small particle of the thrombus can, can travel. Okay, and also associated with the peripheral artery disease. Okay. This is the, the CT scan. The L is this the lumen, lumen or the hole that the, the, the blood travels. T is thrombus or the blood clot. When you have the dilatation, some of some part of the delta is not not uh, having but and is uh, deposit with uh, but clot or thrombus like this. And this is something we call brutal syndrome. That means uh, 
when you have multiple small particles in loose from the plumb bus, it can go distally to your toes. Okay. It can happen. Okay. This is the gold standard of detecting the triplets. Just a simple abdominal ultrasound. Within five seconds, <laughs> you, you can see it from, from the other side that you have a big triple trip head. Okay. And it is a very sensitive and very specific test and cheap. So, so everybody, um, if you want to detect something uh, killing disease, this is a simple test. It's not, not expensive. And not, don't need to prepare anything. Just go and have this uh, ultrasound. So what the other cells see, you can see abnormal shadow. Is this is the normal lumen, and this is the clot or the thrombus inside. And we can measure the, the, the size and the, the extension. This is the we call the chart axis, and this is the log axis. You can see the extension of the diameter and the length of the endosome from the other side. And, and then for the specific diagnosis, we need to do the CT scan. And also, this is for the planning of the treatment. The abdominal CT scan will come out in three-dimensional image, so we can plan how to fix your triple head. And we show you there are two ways to fix it. So after we have the, the, the image of the CT scan, we will uh, have a meeting among our doctor how to fix it. Uh, there are two approaches of the repair. The first one is we call the, the traditional uh, surgical approach, which is we cut your big in the abdomen and open. We call open repair. We fix it by, by uh, surg surg surgical excision, sealing, and put the artificial graft inside. <coughs> but uh, during the last uh, 10 years, uh, we, ho we have a new, new way of treatment called endovascular treatment. That means we need, don't need to open up your tummy. We can do with the instrumentation uh, from the groin with a small cut, and then we can in introduce the, those devices inside and fix it from, from inside. So that's why we call endovascular, mean endo mean inside. Okay, we, we fix it from inside. But open repair still, still exists, especially in people who have rupture, because endovascular hip times, and we may not have time enough to save this pill if you are in shock. So open repair still remains there. But if you are in an elective uh, case, that means you aware that you have this disease and you have you have time to plan. In the is this, I would say ninety five percent of the case is possible now with endovascular on the elective basis. Okay. This is the, the open repair. So we cut open, we use this white thing, this artificial uh, graph, cut and seal on this part. This It may take six, seven hours to do this with about four days and uh, cut. Painful, but saving life. Yeah. So the new technology coming and, and the not right now the, the device is getting better and better because you are uh, form in the vascular aortic repair. Uh, so you is the device is is, is a graph with, with some expandable metal inside. Uh, when it go from the groin, it's about mm, six or seven millimeters in diameter. When it reach the position we the one to the groin, uh, when we didn't withdraw the device, it will so expandable and fix fix the hair down without any leaking. So the device uh, will go from 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 the groin up to the, the uh, right position and then we withdraw the sheet. The device itself will, be, will expand and, and make a seal on this part. And then we go down here 
we make a seal on this part and this part as well. So at the end of the surgery, you have a tight seal here, here, here. So uh, when this is uh, done, you have no blood in this uh, area. The blood is, is, is all tunnel into the, the stent, go to your legs. So the, the aneurysm here, it has no chance of getting ruptured because it's, it's really sealed off with, with, with uh, exclude from the circulation. And eventually, this will get clot and, and thrombosis. So you don't have any risk of ruptures anymore because it was quite repaired. The downside of this is price. The device itself uh, cost you around 600,000 baht. Only the device, or even cheap, even even more expensive, depending on how many pieces that you, you need to to fix. You sometimes you need at least three, sometimes four or five, and sometimes you need to add additional. Sometimes we need to fix this uh, down here and need to to close this front end, and then the new device to close it depends. Okay. All right, uh, with the endovascular repair, since the surgery is about 3 centimeters, so the recovery is fast, okay. uh, risk also small. You don't have really risk of bleeding, you don't have risk of infection because you have a very small infection, and the recovery also very fast. You stay maybe 3, three, three days, 4 days in hospital compared to 7 to 10 days on the open repair. And when we have the surgery, we need to have a good image that make sure that the stand is in a good position. There is no leak from above or from below. And we need to repeat the CT scan maybe every year. The first, the first year we may repeat the first at three months, six months, and then make sure that uh, the stand inside is, is still okay. What is done after abdominal and rupture? There are some signs, like I said, when, when you cause pain, severe pain, that means it's a bad warning sign that it may get in rupture any time, any time or already ruptured, but it's a, it's a concealed press. You need to come to the hospital immediately. Okay. It's an, and one week we got the diagnosis, this is surgical emergency. That means uh, we don't wait until morning to do the surgery. If you come at midnight, we do at mid midnight. If you come at 3 o'clock in the morning, we do at 3 o'clock in the morning. The, when we have this diagnosis, no delay. We, we have our team standby 24 hours to do such surgery in the inner hospital. Okay. Once it's rupture, like I said, high mortality, 50-50. Okay. We may save you, we may not save you. Depends on how bad is your condition. We, I, I lost patient from this rupture. I save patient. Because when, when it's rupture, it's like a, a mainstream of the part. Getting both boom. Sometimes it's really hard to save those people. So if you're getting longer time to the surgery, the chance of dying is getting higher. Uh, for the medical treatment, people who have small size of aneurysm, we may not need surgery. So the good control is control your blood pressure. Okay. Most important, cigarette. Okay. You need to stop those uh, predisposing factors, especially cigarette, control your blood pressure, control your diabetes, make yourself healthy, and you will stay away from this disease. Okay, also that's diabetes, uh, blood pressure, and sometimes the doctor may give you a beta blocker, which is slowing your heart rate and to deal with our sharing force on when you have contract, we have some force the shearing force will produce those aneurysm getting bigger fast. So, 
when when you have the the size, if the size is less than say ten three centimeters, we don't do anything. But when your your size is between three and four centimeters, we need to have the other type shape every year. When the size reach uh, five four five five centimeters, we should uh, monitor every six months. And then if the size is greater than four point five centimeters, we should do something else like a send, send for for surgeon. We can see and we do the CT scan to make sure that it is it's not in the danger zone. If you are in the danger zone, we may suggest you for a surgery and make sure that the surgery will happen before it ruptures. In conclusion, triple M is not uncommon. You can see everywhere. It comes. It's unpredicted, unpreventable, unpredicted, and mostly it's asymptomatic. When it's caused, when it has rupture, the chance of dying is very really high. But if you have a small triple A, just use medication, control your patient. There's no wrong surgery, and plan of treatment is individualized. I say you yeah. have. Two choices of surgery, open repair or endovascular repair depends. Your situation depends on the location, depends on everything. So this is very you need to tailor to, to suit your case. All right. Thank you for your attention and I will do it. Questions for the doctor, just wait for the microphone. What I read, the doctor. Thank you for that excellent talk, doctor. What I want to know what, how does strenuous exercise for older people affect the probability <coughs> of having an aneurysm? Does that increase the risk? Strenuous exercise? When you exercise, you, you increase your blood pressure, but it's temporary. But the benefit of exercise is you lose weight. Uh, your high blood pressure, when you lose weight, the body you work less. So you will reduce your uh, high blood pressure and so on. Because when you exercise, of course, you increase everything. But you, when you exercise, you just short, short period. The rest of the day, you rest. Okay. Unless you a marathon runner, you run six hours. Yes, you you make uh, increased chance of if you if you are a marathon runner, you get this triple A, and I recommend you to run that that far. You may die on on the way. Yes, uh, doctor, the uh, the stent that you sometimes use. What is this, what is it made out of? Oh, uh, they are contained of two parts. The part is, is the clot, make make seal with the blood. This this <coughs> make, make what we call Teflon. Teflon. Yep. Okay. <coughs> and the metal part is is uh, we call cell expandable metal. Is combination we we call this no this no mean it a uh, combination of uh, titanium and nickel. Doctor, um, very interesting talk. Endovascular, the uh, repair that we were just talking about, the stent, has it got a life of it or will it sort of last? It will last, last forever. One ahead. Uh, yeah, all my friends are always bragging about how many stents they have, and I feel left out. Uh, I, I was wondering, what, did, what is it advisable to uh, get the test done to see how much blockage you have in your arteries? Yeah, they don't seem to do it during my annual physical. Uh, normal annual physical, uh, I think we should improve the abdominal ultrasound, which can easily detect from, from the test. If, if they don't have in your list, we may need to request additional tests for the abdominal ultrasound. Yeah. Because this, 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 this is sometimes like is hidden behind the curtains, and they don't really interest. 
But as a surgeon, we saw many people die from the disease. So I think we, we should add additional abdominal exercise in your routine physical. Uh, last year, I got hit by a truck here in Patio, and uh, ever since then, my foot, my foot has been numb. Do you think that's related to some sort of artery or vein blockage? Uh, difficult to say. You may have a, if you numb, numb me, you may have some uh, nerve injury, which you may have a cut in your injury, or even the surgery itself, if you fix the bone, when we do the cut, we may cut some of the small nerve that go to the skin. It can happen. Okay. But not, not related to the artery. Hello, sir. Uh, what would the typical cost of this operation be, ignoring the cost of the stent? Uh, I would say it would be around 1.2 to 1.5 million. Doctor. Thank you for your presentation today, Doctor. Um, being a heart surgeon, do you place any value in the coronary calcium scoring system? They've started doing that at Ben Doctor today. I'm curious as to how you view it. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we have a, a test that we can add to the actual routine checkup. It's called calcium score, which will cost you another a few thousand, maybe two or three thousand baht. Calcium scoring of the heart or coronary heart disease is a main predictor of your coronary artery risk. And we'll do this like last year we did about a thousand cases of calcium scoring in our hospital. And those calcium score above 100. <coughs> we may suggest them to have additional tests to make sure that they don't have disease in the, in the heart. We, we, we do concern of this very much. Over here. Okay, uh, great presentation there. I have a uh, uh, blood clot in my leg. And is there an operation for that or anything? I'm on blood thinners right now. Yes. Uh, if you have blood clot in your vein, right? In the vein, we call it DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Is that correct? Is I don't know. You have a vein or artery? I don't know. This, all I know is I have my leg is big. I woke up one morning and I had it. And it's been that, about two or three that, months. That is the vein. Because the vein makes make the vein. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, uh, but I'm on the uh, uh, Pradoxia, 150 milligram. Yeah, Pradoxia? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this, this, your condition we call DVT or deep vein thrombosis. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for the clot in the vein, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have for any surgery. Yeah, no only, pain or nothing, yeah. Only uh, is uh, one, one procedure that we, some people do is we call IBCs. Uh, filter. Uh, IBC filter, IBC is inferior vein carotid. This is the, the big veins uh, before entering your heart. Some people uh, put a metal part like a filter at the IBC portion to filter the clot. Because when you have the vein, the clot in the vein, the, the very scaffold complication is the clot travel back to the heart. And then it's, we go to the lung and cause PE or pulmonary embolism, and you can die. So platina is the gold standard of treat this condition. But if you have with some time people who have become recurrent PE or pulmonary embolism, then you can have sometimes you have a small PE, and you can you can detect from the test. And even you have a, the platina, you still have that. So the doctor may recommend you for the IBC filter, but it in, in certain cases, not in everybody. Okay. And one, one, one warning is that if you have a DVT, no more leg massage. Okay, when you have a, especially thigh massage, they push you very hard. Mm -hmm. And you, they push you, squeeze you, 
and you may make your those spot come loose and you go to your heart. We we saw some news that people who have DVD and get to the Thai massage and they just suddenly die mm -hmm. at the place because of this clot loose to your heart and block the artery in your lungs. Thank you for a very informative talk. Um, a few years ago, my husband and I went at the same time to have an annual medical checkup. Now, I have a history of extremely high cholesterol, which my husband doesn't have. We both had calcium scoring. It wasn't at Bangkok Pattaya Hospital, it was at one of the others in the group. And they told me, my score was zero on calcium. My husband's was so high, they wanted him to see um, a, a, a cardiologist immediately. Yeah, I know it's over a thousand. We queried it immediately because to our untrained mind, if I got very high cholesterol, would I not have a, a very high calcium scoring? Uh, both true and, and false. Uh, high cholesterol and cancer stories sometimes is, is totally unrelated. <laughs> but eventually when you're getting old, you will be there. Sometimes you still work, still young. Because calcium scoring is take time to make the position. If you have prolonged uh, high cholesterol, when you are old enough, especially for women, why women doesn't have uh, and this is when they are young because uh, the hormone estrogen protect your heart. When you go to the postmenstrual period, that means you lose your protection factor, estrogen, and then those diseases will come. But if you are still young, which I, I assume you are very young at the moment, oh. <laughs> uh, at one point, uh, you will be there. So, so it's good good to know that you don't have uh, zero cancer score, but you don't be happy with this. Okay, you need to make sure that you have a good control of your cholesterol to prevent. Because right now you may have some protection from from your hormone. In contrast with with men, we don't have estrogen, so you may have something come earlier. Doctor. <clears throat> yeah, kind of just follow on from that. The actual calcium scoring for me was a thousand and six. And they say about a hundred, you know, you've got problems. Well, I'm under Dr. <coughs> Uha at Bangkok Pakya uh, because I have a kidney problem. I've only got a 50% function. And when I mentioned this to her, she said, scrap that, throw it in a bin, take a baby aspirin every night. You've got no problems, your blood pressure's down, you don't have diabetes, your cholesterol's right down. That was a ridiculous result. And I quite agree with it, quite frankly, I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, have you been to the standard heart test, like the exercise breath test, or even angiogram? Because if you have high calcium score, what, 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 is, what the recommendation is that we need to do further tests. The first is the, we call the treadmill or the exercise stress test and get you on the treadmill and get let you walk faster and faster. When your heart rate is getting higher, uh, if you have blockage in your heart, artery, that means you don't have enough blood flow and you cause change in the ECG uh, on, on, the, on the monitor and then you can step up to the angiogram or whatever to see your blockage in your artery. It's direct correlation, I, 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 I answer. Calcium scoring and heart disease have a direct correlation. Doctor, uh, just a minute, bro. Uh, doctor, um, seeing as aspirin is brought up, I've been taking aspirin uh, for basically 40 years. What are your views on aspirin benefiting? Us mature yeah. people. Okay. 20 years ago, aspirin is like a magic. Everybody needs to take aspirin. Even I, I, I think I should take aspirin. But recently, 
uh, with all the part, all, all the publications, aspirin do more harm than than preventing, because the increased risk of breathing, stomach breathing, everybody breathing. So right now, aspirin is not recommended in people who have low risk, even your old. When you're getting high risk, if you have proof that you have uh, chronic heart disease, you have triple A, you have blockage in your body anywhere, then they recommend you aspirin. If you test, you don't have anything, like I, I stop aspirin. But I, I don't think it's, it's do any good for me. It is an own thing that it can make your stomach bleed. Um, yeah. But I find that people who take a sip of water and then aspirin are more likely to have a bleed. What, John? It's got. It's uh, has, has, has uh, also a local effect and systemic effect. If you take aspirin on your empty stomach, you may have breathing in your stomach. But the effect of aspirin itself, uh, we call anti pellet The pellet is, is the the the, part, uh, the component of the blood that stop the the breathing point, okay? and also stop the clot from heart attack. Uh, we have different uh, form of aspirin. You can take it sublingually, which not touch your stomach. We can have an enteric cord aspirin, which can will dissolve after your stomach in the intestine, which prevent your stomach bleeding. But anyway, aspirin itself is a systemic effect and cause bleeding, especially in the brain or, or some other places. Yeah, doctor, kind of similar question, aspirin. I had a bypass operation in 2005. After that, I had any problems anymore. So I have a discussion with my doctor, who I have to check up around three times a year, to lower this aspirin, because I also read about 70, you better don't use aspirin if there is nothing, no problems anymore. Uh, I don't agree because uh, if you have bypass surgery, I still recommend my patient to have a lifelong aspirin because you are you are there already. You, you already have that disease, and aspirin will help you prevent you from from something happen. And bypass surgery is not a cure solution for your heart. It just buy more time for you. That's all. Because you, the disease, your block is still there. What we do is just to bring more blood to beyond your blockage artery. That's it. We don't heal. We don't heal your disease. And how you could you stop your aspirin if you don't heal your disease? Very simple. Doctor, does a stent address the underlying issue? And if not, do you do any therapy such as chelation? to keep arteries clear. That beyond my knowledge, so sorry. Uh, chelation is, is uh, another science which we don't teach in our current medical program law. Chelation is, is the other sign which we not allowed to practice this chelation in our hospital. I'm sorry, I could answer that. I've got a question just about that uh, hospital in general. You do, you mentioned 10 aortic surgeries a year. How many just uh, cardiac surgeries do you do in a year? About 50. Or 50. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Very interesting talk. Um, I, I wonder what this, I was thinking of having this scan done that uh, decides whether you need to have stents or something. Uh, is that right? Is it a CT scan or a slice scan or something? CT scan is called computerized uh, tomography. That means we, we use the, the big uh, high speed scanning and you can get very good pictures. Is this recommended for everybody to have done when they go to a certain age? No, uh, only in patients who have a suspicious of something inside. Because CT scan, also you have a high exposure, exposure to radiation. 
and sometimes you need to inject the, the contrast media into your veins and sometimes this contrast media can hurt your kidney so it's not, not, not a totally safe uh, procedure you need to have a, a good such indication to do the CT scan Um, I would just like to ask, I've got, um, my father died of 48 of a heart attack, and then last year my brother died of 58 of a heart attack, and my sister's had a heart attack. There's seven of in the family. <laughs> um, but I noticed that you're doing something for the men right now, I'm, I'm screening them. Will you ever be doing that for the women? This is my, I speak this with, with my, my group since day one that we could include women, I don't know. I, I will go back and then maybe ask them because I think, uh, like I said it in my presentation, if women get disease, they are high risk because they die more. I bring back to, to our group and team and then we'll... I'm, I'm going to do the uh, annual checkup anyway, so... Yes. Uh, but I just, uh... Uh, wonderful talk, thank you, Doctor. So so comprehensive, and I, I always need to thank Tanya, who does just a wonderful job. Yes, she always finds uh, wonderful speakers for us, like Doctor Sujit. Now, outside, it's not too late to apply for a free aortic test. Okay, this is what the ultrasound and stuff is for. So the lady is still out there, so go out and apply for it. It's worth 4,300 baht and it's free. Oh, but you do have to be a member, thank you. We had at least one people person join today specifically to get the test. John, I've got a question. Doctor, um, there's lots of uh, problems that give you uh, this particular condition, but what part does diet play in avoiding something like this. Considering 25 to 40 percent of the Western world now is becoming obese, is there any foods or foods that we shouldn't be eating to avoid problems like this? Very tough question. <laughs> uh, very tough question. Uh, what standard recommendation to my patient is simple but very really tough to do. Eat what you don't like. <laughs> not, too not, not too much. Because food is tempting and, and <laughs> difficult, I would say difficult. I think basic is uh, low fat, <coughs> low cholesterol, oh, no alcohol. <laughs> very really tough. So my simple answer is eat whatever you don't like. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, please thank Dr. Sergio. And thank Dr. Matthew Foster. Doctor, we have a uh, certificate of appreciation for you. Thank you very much once again for your presence. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, next week.